The girl. Let her go. Oh God, <laughs> what's going on here? Is that Lupin the third? Shut up. Come closer and I kill her. She's as good as dead. Sorry, but you're not gonna get the chance. Bang! I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Name, Trevor Flawless. Flawless? Kidnapping, murder, sentence, death penalty. He looks like a fucking JoJo villain. After escaping, Flawless met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was death row inmate. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey's first trial. February 16th, 9.24 a.m. District Court Room, Defense Lobby Number 4. Ugh, I'm so nervous, feel like I'm gonna die. I never should have accepted this case. This just, he just looks like a fighting game character. <laughs> he's just, he's, this is what happens to Cody. Cody from Street Fighter if he was from JoJo instead. You know what? For anyone who knows anything about Part 6, this is just basically Survivor. <laughs> I did nothing. I swear I didn't kill nobody. Terry Flawless. My first client. Sentenced to death five years ago and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Um, so, why did you escape anyways? Gah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, never lie. I didn't escape from anywhere. But Mr. Flawless, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Hmm. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyways, I didn't do it. I never killed anybody. Sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, I'm really, really sorry. They sent me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. Hmm, <laughs> Flawless, like falls, you know? Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believed that Terry Flawless did it. After you escaped, did you meet the policewoman? Now you gotta be joking, what do you mean by that? Yeah. I did. She's the reason I escaped. So, that much is true. He didn't. He did meet with the victim. Did you try to read his name? Nope, not really. <laughs> but she was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can't trust him, right? I mean, I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Oh my fucking god. Good dot? Who the fuck? Why is he so sexy? You're not gonna figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. You're. Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all, all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? 
The old man's probably still in bed. Did she work with him? I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough after all? It's me, Diego Armando. I didn't say. Cue the drums, Diego Armando. Mia face, sexy boy. Wh wait, what? So Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossburg Law Office, is here for me. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. Today's you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine. An escaped death row convict for the first client. Yeah, thanks. I sure wish I could... Sure wish I can get out of it, though. Huh, relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. Oh. Genius. Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and I heard the single I heard the simple childlike voice. I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Oh god. Court is now in se Oh god. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Flawless. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is the prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand the lawyer for both sides. Uh, the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's been talking about. They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten has earned himself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Hmph. <laughs> God. Let's recap. We know that Edgeworth didn't lose a case until he met Phoenix. Mia got traumatized by the case. Huh. And in the first case that Diego Armando died, we're fucked. <laughs> we're all fucked. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon, and this is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day the defendant escaped, the day the defendant escaped, a policeman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Flawless was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. Hold up. Question. What do we have? Stabbed with the knife in the back, died from blood loss between four and five. Huh. Hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival at the office. A bit smug. Dubbed a genius as soon as he's. Look at that face. Look at that face. That's the face of a of a man on a mission. Huh. I refuse to say his name correctly. You can't make me. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Flawless, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crime were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and, and protracted. Correct. But in the end... We finally decided this case was a certain witness's testimony. Look at that face! That's the face of a man who accomplished his mission. A witness's testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Flawless at the scene later testified against him. 
She said the witness, Mr. Flawless, threw his young victim into the river. <laughs> but the pun. Forget the pun. Forget the pun. We're on my time now. We're on demon time. <laughs> demon time. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in the river are never recovered. So, Ms. Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. The policewoman you just mentioned. That wouldn't be. Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Huh, I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. <laughs> The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Uh, watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why, you. You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. My friend called it a bitch baby face and called Edgeworth bitch baby ever since. He's not a bitch baby. He's far from a bitch. <laughs> He's proven himself to me. Witness, state your name and occupation. Bitch face is fucking Larry. Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective in charge of in charge of this case, sir. I finally got promoted to detective division half a year ago. I don't believe everyone. I don't believe anybody asked you about that. <laughs> I love how me is just like that's cool, sir. But uh, when did I ask? Hey, ma'am, you got any ideas how much work it takes? What is it? You. You're real gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart is aching for you. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional otherwise. I'll write up you in, in contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Like your paycheck. Okay, I got it. Sorry, pal, she's taken. Oh. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran of the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more detail about the incident itself. Yes, sir. I gotcha. Alright, okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area. This is... This is a sketch of Dusty... Wait, what? This is a sketch of Dusty Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met here on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at the police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Oh my god, I'm so hungry. I see. Bridge located 40 feet above the river. Was the victim blood blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they ever met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll- We have prepared. <laughs> I'm sure you- Okay. Here we go with this shit. The two of them- The two of them most certainly didn't meet on the bridge that day. Just look at the judge. He's like, what? You say what? The judge can be a fucking- he make a million dollars with a YouTuber face like that. Look at him. Look at that. Just slap that on the thumbnail. Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. 
Okay, now listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Thus, I trust me and get ready. I do like Gumshoe's new coat. His coat is wonderful. I like it better than the green coat. Why'd he get rid of it? <laughs> On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusty Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Flawless. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Tried to make a getaway. He's still Von Karma's favorite, so he's absolutely would be a bitch, baby. I'm telling you, he's not a bitch. <laughs> he's not a bitch. He's not a bitch, baby. Got it. Edgeworth, Edgeworth is his own man. He got it. He proved himself multiple times. He went on a journey of the heart, came back, talked about true justice. Mr. Flawless was arrested at the at the police point, at the police checkpoint. He set up at the base of the mountain. I took a drink of my iced tea. I have a bunch of iced tea here, and I barely drunk the damn thing. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Coming right up. Hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just a cold... It's just cold in here, man. Courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean, the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. <laughs> you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure video, those court procedure videos you stayed up last night watching. Okay. On the day of the incident, th what the hell am I even supposed to do here? I have nothing. Five yards. Where's the checkpoint at? There's the car. So the checkpoint was at the base of the mountain, so... Okay. On the day of the incident, unknown person phoned Sergeant asked meeting Sergeant Hawthorne, went to Dusty Bridge, there's any time, and met with Mr. Flawless. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. Criminal stuffed her body into the trunk, and they get away. Mr. Flawless arrested the police checkpoint, and set up at the base of the mountain. I know to try pressing. I know that. Hmm. Huh, a bridge up in the mountain, but why meet there? Because it's a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto the bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place <laughs> and the place where all this occurred is, of course, Dusty Bridge. <sighs> the very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed at Mr. Flawless. Returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. Hmm. Mr. Flawless had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his car? No, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he can... how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa. That doesn't that doesn't look too comfortable. 
The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back, nice and firm. The condition of the body... Oh. Uh, condition of the body when it was discovered was very important information. Detective, was there any strange... Anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Oh, fuck. Let's see. What? Do I get penalized for pressing? No. Okay. No, uh, you only get penalized for pressing when the game ever decides it. You know? When the game feels like it's on his bullshit, and it's like, We don't want you- We don't want you to have any help here. We want you to die. <laughs> Alright, here's a photo of the trunk. Don't see anything. Hmm. Don't see anything suspicious. Does the lock look broken to you guys? Or is that just me? What did the defendant have to say about this photo? Well, he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. He did nothing. <laughs> He's nothing all over the crime scene. At this very, at the very least, we know he stole a car. The car was stolen, but it makes sense. Okay, yeah, true. Just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says, "Uh, sorry, I told a little lie, or something like that." Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Hmm. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up a checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Flawless might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30. And it takes probably 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm. That was kind of close. Any later, and Mr. Flawless could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A trap? Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not. Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you better get some more information. If you go, and if you're going to get caught up in the trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The very famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. Hmm. Alright. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah. We were really on the ball. We found the criminal within an hour of the murder. It was great. <laughs> we even got to say, Don't move! We got you surrounded. Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspicious bridge. Up in the mountains. So. How... So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hartthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Huh. If that's what happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Flawless, but... She left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anybody. That's interesting. Well, let's press that phone call then. This unknown person, you have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Flawless. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Flawless. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. Hmm. Confidential police matters written by the victim. 
Hmm. According to this note, it seems that the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Flawless. <sighs> Whose bright idea was it to keep the note from me? <laughs> Looks like the judge is even more sure about his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. Well, if we did that, then we would never learn, now will we? <laughs> it's the detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey, now, don't make that face at me. I just want to, I just want to say it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? Within the cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. All right. Let's see. All right. 4:30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear a white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Dahlia. Tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Okay. I see. Alright. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Dahlia, huh? Well, this has just gotten even interesting. Cool. And that's where we were really murdered. Stuffed her body to the trunk, trying to make a getaway. I think that's the only thing I didn't press, right? No, I, I pressed that. Okay, I pressed this one too. Flawless was arrested at the police checkpoint. Hmm. But I don't see anything strange, do you? I do. I do see something strange. Where's the white scarf? Witness! What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry. I totally forgot what I was gonna say. This is... This is the first time I ever had to actually address someone like that. You should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I like this. I'm not sure I like you. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee? Want a piece of my coffee candy? Is that what you call your? Is that what you call your business? Mike. Hey there. You want a piece of my coffee candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. What the fuck does that mean? What? Motherfuckers drink coffee at 15. That's what I did. I would come in late to school with, like, a cup of coffee, and then people just look at me. I'm like, yeah, whatever, bitch. <laughs> come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. It's Diego's foot long. Detective! Yes, ma'am. This photo. Look at this photograph! You said that there was nothing uh, peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, then. I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The note? It's very, it very clear, he says. Wear a white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, the special request. Heh. <laughs> I, uh... I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where's the white scarf? Where's the... Listen. If the scarf don't fit, you must acquit. I can't seem to find it in this photo. Hmm. Well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it. Oh my god, Edgeworth looks so short. <laughs> the caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I expect she'd just do that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, do you have anything to say about this? Eh. He's like, eh, whatever. I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you are searching so desperately for is this one, perchance. Huh. Where'd you find that? On Dusty Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. What? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal s satchel. <laughs> my sa- He carries a satchel?! Um, of course a fabulous man like that. Still don't know what that means. But I get the other, she's fine. 
Hmm. It's one of the few lines you don't get. Which line? Alright. It's the safest place I know. Huh. That hot that's hot shot. Sure has a sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough. What it, what it was intended for. The coffee candy one? Oh. Hey, maybe and listen. Maybe he's maybe she just wanted a piece of some hard coffee candy. That's all I'm saying. It's hard candy. Gotta put some work into it if you want to finish it. <laughs> it looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising. It was drizzled on the. It was drizzling on the mountain that day. It was drizzle. For drizzle. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. All right. Now, if the attorney for the defense is finished embarrassing herself. I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is alright with you, isn't it, Miss Fay? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck and make sweet love to him. Very good. Now if we're done with the mud-covered scarf business. The prosecution moves to establish conclusively, and with hard evidence, that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Flawless did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. Can't wait to hear all about it. Everything's moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's no reason why anyone considers this kind of... This kid a... Wow. There's a reason why everybody considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Alright. Well, then I understand me perfectly. We all want a piece of that mocha latte skin smooth talking gentleman. <laughs> exactly, right? Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the when the incident took place. This photo was accident this photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Who's the witness? It was drizzling the day, unfortunately. It's a little hard listen. Listen. Hey, who's the witness? Is it Lotta? Is it lot it better? Mm? Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyways, the criminal showed the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm. Looking at this photo, you really get the sense that the bridge is very high up. So he was wielding a knife along with the ball and chain? That's kind of weird. It's about a 40 foot drop from the- He managed to chase her down with a ball and chain. Oh. It's about a 40 foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyways? Let's just say it was a well-intentioned third party. Uh-huh, potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well... They said they absolutely did not want to testify. That person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Is it Dahlia? Ugh. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we need no reason to comply them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So, as you can see, Terry Flawless had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is coming clear to me now. Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? Hmm. This case was doomed from the start. <laughs> of course it was. As it is written, so it is foretold. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. Shows a victim wearing a scarf. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyways, criminals shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. All right. 
Interesting. Very interesting. So what do we have? Let's see. Map, photo, victim's note, scarf, photo. But it was accidentally taken by the witness. So what do you mean accidentally? How do you accidentally take a photo like this? The victim's wearing a scarf in the photo, all right. So about the witness who took this photo. What was the person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. Yeah, because when I take photos of wildflowers, I point it out a fucking bridge. What? There are many unusual types of flora on the mountain. People in the area says it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirits? Now that you mention it, this photo. The dog is like having a sneezing fit. This cloudy, fog like thing. Is it a ghost? I don't believe it. No, Your Honor, no. I don't think it's a ghost. Is it a g g g g ghost? Like, let's get out of here, Scoob. Actually, there's an eyewitness. I want to know more about the witness. All right, who's this eyewitness? She's a college student, a female college student. That's right, meaning she's female and a student. Oh, wow, I can't believe it. She doesn't do well in front of the other people, so I came to testify for her. <laughs> Maybe so, but as the, attorney for the, uh, as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. Wait, what, what happened? Judge you more? What do you mean, judge? What happened? Did I say something wrong? Did I do something? I did something, didn't I? For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements, that's all. What's that supposed to mean? The prosecution has other more has other more decisive evidence. The prosecution has other more okay. Alright. Uh, no, I said everything fine for a change. <laughs> All right. Oh, you meant judge you more. Oh, and gen oh, you were talking to the judge. Oh, I get it. Now. I get it. I can get with the times. I'm hip and hopping happening. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of female college students. Yeah, judge got to do his damn job. Cause you hire someone on that job to do that job. A female college student. Eh? It seems she's female and a college student. I feel like that's some- I feel like that's something that, like, that, like, a screener for, like, porn would do. He's like, wow, she's female and doing it for college. Let's sign her up for a contract. <laughs> we absolutely must hear her testimony. That had to give us a good reason why. Mm -hmm. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. How do you accidentally take a fucking photo? It was drizzling that day. It's hard to see what was going on. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. <laughs> Shut up, Gunster. Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. I even I even slept and fell slept. I even slipped and fell. I was when I was on the bridge. It was really something. Anyways, the criminal shoved the victim down from the back and stabbed her. Blah 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 blah. And that part of the witness's testimony as well. Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Brutal? 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 What? Brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? Or does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tales, and that way he says, brutal. It was brutal. He just said it like a fucking freak. <laughs> I wonder if he's Canadian. Oh, God. I'm sure you almost die. <laughs> He's like, it's pretty funny, <laughs> I almost died. 
Savior Nashi looks for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. Court record, huh? It must have been where the scarf fell. Went by the victim at the time. Huh. Now that he mentions it. If she was pushed down, how come she's not dirty? Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Attention! So, at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah. Faux shizzle. It was nothing but drizzle. <laughs> yeah. And fog, too. Just a general, just generally soggy atmosphere. Well, we have a contradiction in our hands. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the so with the soggy t atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the in the car trunk. Consider the conditions at the scene of the crime. Something isn't right. <laughs> Look at Edgeworth. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> well, by all means, please enlighten us. What's about this photo? All right. Look at this photograph! Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there's something strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. We call the testimony... What were the conditions of the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusty bridge was all wet. If the victim already had fallen down on her stomach, or top of the bridge... And the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Hmm. Is it possible that she was killed earlier? And then someone came and took the picture? Then... Huh. So let's say... Let's say Dahlia had a hand in this, right? Theorycraft time. So, for some reason, Hawthorne killed. Don't know why, some reason killed. Then, put her in the trunk of the car... Have her in there for a bit, or whatever, or something like that, you know. And then, uh, set up a camera on a timer, reenact the scene, click, there's, there's your evidence. Hmm. But at, if that's the case, then wouldn't the time of death be determined by the state of the body? Oh. A lot of things. Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne. Question, I like I'm I'm trying to remember. I'm not too I'm not too uh I don't have too much insight on this, but isn't Hawthorne the name of the Black Dahlia? Isn't that what that is? Hmm. Then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Nah, that's exactly right. No, it's not. What's the name of the Black Dahlia? The other day I fell on the muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard, playoff beard was befouled. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had, if your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on the muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal... Wait, what? Pride of the legal league would be wet, not by mud. Elizabeth Schwart. Okay. Fortunately, I had yet I had yet to testify that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge? Hmm. I mean, didn't you say you picked up the scarf on the bridge? Am I wrong about that? Found on the bridge. Yeah. Huh. A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like that. Neither would a real woman. <laughs> I love how she fans her bang. That's awesome. Of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves the that proves that the surface is muddy. 
Said it yourself, player boy. The evidence is... The scarf. Huh. It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got it this muddy, it means that the bridge was obviously covered in mud. No. I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Oh, come on. You're a novice, do. Hey, same to you, buddy. Dahlia Hawthorne is a reference to her. Hawthorne came from the lady who wrote the book about her. Oh, it's the reporter. Okay. Quote unquote reporter or whatever. You know, and all that shit. Okay, I knew it had something to do with. The... Okay. I knew I heard that name. <laughs> Miss Faye's assertions make perfect sense to me. Assertions, my bad. Assertion. I don't admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there's six and uh, there's exists an explanation. I just hit the shit out of my fucking headphones. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? Alrighty then. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. <laughs> You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. The witness photo showing the defendant and the victim. Or the witness's testimony that start that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. It's the photo. Right? Hmm. Hmm. What do you say just now? I'm not sure I like that. It wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence to the court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his... We'll expose his evidence as a flimsy scam? It really is. Yes, sir. The false evidence in this case is... Hmm. It's testimony. It's no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. Mm, I don't think so. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. That's true. <laughs> it's not just true, it is the truth. If there was a truly... If there was truly decisive witness in that case, I'm certain the boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests a cross-examination to the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but, contra but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. Huh. You should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Hmm? Your Honor, prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at this time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What, is Edgeworth's, what Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now, let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Get ready for a battle, 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 battle. Witness. What is your name and occupation? God! Why do the pretty ones always gotta be evil? Everyone's so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. 
make my heart flutter like Doki Doki. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look so scrum. <laughs> you look so scrumptious as a double. What? You look so scrumptious as a double double and a dozen donut holes. So scrump diddly umptious. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. <laughs> Let me at ya. Hey, not so fast. How old is she? <laughs> How old is she again? This is a year before we met Phoenix too, right? So what, she, so she's exactly 18 or something? <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> yeah. uh, as I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You're truly a gentleman. Miss Faye, you learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one of me. Um, sir? Um, yeah, my dear? This is my first time. So I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Everything said here can be taken out of context. Anyways, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hmm, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Well then. Now then. Maybe please have your name and occupation. My name is, uh, Miss Melissa Foster. Liar! I'm a college student. A freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred. And you're the one who took this photo. Is that correct? How can you be so mean? Now see here. What are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll force you I'll force the I'll be forced to penalize you. I don't like the turn this is taken. It's her cat eyes. It's her cat eyes that I like. Hmm? Is she staring at me? And you would be... Huh? I'm the defense attorney. My name's Mia Fey. I see. So you are... Now the young lady. That's not creepy at all. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Could you please give us your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I'll do my best. She knows her? She couldn't have known her yet because this is her first time. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe somehow Dahlia knows Mia, but there's no way Mia knows Dahlia, right? Unless there's some, like... But why would she know her? This is her first case, so she hasn't really done anything. She's 19. Okay. We're safe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed there were two people standing on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. And that's when I hurried and took the photo that showed the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. Maybe they know each other? If they knew each other, then Mia should have said so. Mia should have recognized something, I would assume. Also, isn't Mia like, how old is Mia at this point? For some reason, her profile's not here. That's great. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map, the map would be of help here. Hmm. I was standing right over there. You're standing right... You're standing... What? That doesn't make any sense to me. Alright, well, let's see where we're going with this. Diego's 27, Mia's 25. Okay, then why why would Mia know a fucking 19-year-old then? For what reason? Did she babysit her at some point? Like, what's going on there? 
It was standing right over here. It was standing in the beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Oh, what a cute camera. Just like its owner. Alright, calm down, Beardy. Alright then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again, and you'll feel the wrath of my gravel. Geodude has evolved into gravel. Graveler. Graveler. -er. Hmm. Alright. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. For what? Oh shit, why'd I do that? <laughs> I, could, I for, totally forgot that we were being penalized for shit. Did you say wildflowers? Yes. The mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wildflowers. Hmm. But it's only February. Well, I couldn't wait for spring to come. Oh. I know just how you feel. I was just like that when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just... <laughs> I just wouldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde... Wait, what? So I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew out properly. Well, you mind if we get back to the facts? Okay, well that was a safe one. Hmm. They never knew each other yet. Well, that's the obvious conclusion. Suddenly they just started fighting. And when I heard, hurry, uh, when I heard and took the photo. That shows the crucial moment. What? That doesn't make sense to me. They started fighting, then you took the photo? But if they started fighting, then why the fuck... Then why is this the photo? Oh my, not that photo, my bad. Why is, uh... Why is this the photo? They don't look like fighting to me. I don't think they're fighting. And point it out. I know to point it out. Don't rush me. Listen, game is crazy. Alright? Game is crazy. Sometimes sometimes you think too hard on things, sometimes you think too lightly on things, alright? Alright, I guess that's not the one then. I guess I'll do it on the next statement. Yeah, I guess I don't think anything either. <laughs> that's okay. You're just, you're just giving hints, it's fine. You know, I'm just, I'm just one of those people where I have to say things out loud and like, think about it like an evil genius or something, and then I do the plan. I'm the type of guy that like, the moment I have the good guy in my clutches, I'll tell him my whole entire plan and just fuck it up in the end. Witness. <laughs> Understandable. When you say you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you mean? Uh, all I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testify that you saw the two of them starting a fight. Normally, that kind of thing would be referred to as crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see, the photo we presented was the only one that there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm. Oh. My apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay a situation, can he? I'm sorry. I'm very... I'm a... I'm a very bad girl. <laughs> I used it... Uh, I used it all up. The film, I mean. Oh, back in the day where we had film? You ran out of film. Or as like, or as like, uh, people with accents like to say, a film. <laughs> this photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that's the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that day. All the other photos of the wit are of the witness herself playing amongst the wildflowers. This witness herself. Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer. Ha ha! I knew it! 
Got a timer on your fucking camera. So you took a photo of yourself. I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details. It seems that Miss Faye's agitation was not to deceive after all. Wait, wait just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Mr. Foster? Mr. Foster, my bad. Miss Foster? Perhaps then you can tell us about the different, different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Hmm. Been overthinking in this game, but have to remember it's not a real justice system. Yeah. It's a stupid justice system. It's just a system where you just go, I think he did it. Did he do it? Guys, you think he did it? Yeah, we think he did it. He did it. Lock him up. It's over. <laughs> Bring it real long to the game. It's the worst thing you can mistake. Because everybody in this court would be fucking locked up by now. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. <laughs> it looks like... Looks like other... Ca I totally forgot that he was here. <laughs> and now that, I, now that I'm remembering he was here, I can just think... Maybe Dahlia's staring at her because she's like, You dating that? You dating that? Do you, can I have that? <laughs> Do you want that? Looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. She's jealous of her boyfriend, though. Alright. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed there was two people standing on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting! <laughs> Again. Again with the fight. Again with the fisticuffs. The victim turned around and tried to run away, but... She's only about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. Alright, I don't even- I'm not- I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm not even gonna press anything. I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna do that. Your Honor. Your Honor, she's spitting bullshit. Witness, your testimony's a joke. Such a joke, I didn't even have to look at the evidence. Huh? What? But I- I just- don't make any sense, exactly. Miss Fay, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. I thought I warned you to fucking get a better hairline, bitch. <laughs> What's <laughs> one short t I lost my temper. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there are two contradictions? It's simple. Let's just take a look at this diagram. Look at this photograph! According to, their, according to their testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if that were true... If it, <clears throat> but if that were... If, if they were... For some reason, I'm losing my footing here. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run... Well then... Well then, fucking... <laughs> that would happen. She would have hit a dead end. Be wary, triumph of prime predicates. Does he fall? Hmm. You said 10 yards, but she couldn't have run even 5. Because Dusty Bridge is collapsed on the other side. You're fucked. What does this all mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. It's charming. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. And that's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court? Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's no major mistake in this diagram. See, that's why... That's why earlier when she's all like, I was hanging out over here taking pictures, I sat there, I said, that makes no sense to me, but okay, let's go with it. <laughs> what are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's very old bridge. You couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So, you're saying... I'm saying that even though the bridge is currently in despair... There's no evidence that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. Oh, suck me off, Edgeworth. Come on. 
That's ridiculous. Can't actually tell the. Can't actually tell. All right, then why don't we just fucking hop on over there and go check it ourselves? Can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. Okay. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I when I presented the evidence. Hmm. Hmm. Heh, that guy's good. What do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was in his ins was his insurance policy. What? A coward. As I said, bitch, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, listen, he's proven himself. It's just that sometimes, sometimes he just gets to me, all right? Well, Miss Faye, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. First of all, wasn't reckless. Second of all, he failed to put that information to begin with. Watch yourself, Judge. Sleep with one eye open tonight, you bitch. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard for me to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell them what you saw. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. After he stabbed her in the back, we quickly picked her up. Oh, uh, wait, what? We. Why'd I say we? My bad. I said we because I know she's guilty. <laughs> he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only... The only way he could not make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Okay, well, there are two things in that statement which I don't understand. Yes, sir. I'm still shaking up. If he accepts the testimony as is, we're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye. Your cross-examination, if you please. Contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on for the attack. Go on the offensive. Alright, two things stand out for me. Number one. Number one. Number one. She, he picked her up. Carried her away. My man's holding a ball and chain. Do you really think he, he's that strong? I don't think so. Second of all... He totally had another way to fucking hide the body. Are you crazy? I suppose it was the only way he could make sure the body was hidden. I'm just gonna use the same evidence. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. There you go. A killer not wanting his victim to be found? I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for the purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area, you'll see how. Okay. Alright. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeway pointed out something interesting about the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful currents. Most bodies that fall are never recovered. In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim body was carried away and never found. If ten, murder, if 10 murders were to occur at the same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that even that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. It's not a contradiction because nobody cares that it's not what the defendant did. That's that what happened. What do you mean, the fact that he's carrying a fucking ball and chain? I'm just saying... It's not a contra it's not a contradiction, but still it's just like, come on guys, let's let's be smart about it. Like two seconds. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Faye. But I must admit, it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Oh. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Heh. 
How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would... Oh. <clears throat> Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. Judge, hold them in contempt. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Alright. The point out, they point out multiple times that he's fucking buff. They don't, they've never pointed out that he's buff. He is buff. They never pointed out, they pointed out how he fucking talks like a weirdo. <laughs> listen, listen, if the judge can be easily swayed, maybe I can use that to my advantage, okay? <laughs> Miss Faye, alright, Miss Faye, it seems your assertion is without merit after all. Oh, they will? Well, they haven't yet. <laughs> But what the, f what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Surely, you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That is certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. <sighs> Damn it. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who the hell are you talking about? Alright, I'll do my best. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. The killer broke into the trunk and the stolen car and hid the body in there. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm. Bastard. Could just leave the body on top of the bridge. Why couldn't he just leave the body on top of the bridge? Care to explain? Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge, hidden away in from mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but the mountain is famous amongst hikers. A surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining all that day, correct? There's also a small temple and a channeling dojo. Yeah, okay. You know those monks? They just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting what the witness saw with our own eyes. Hmm. Okay. Carry doors to the car. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Hmm. You, personally, you personally witnessed that? Yes. Did anything strange happen when he did that? Well, I don't know if you call it strange or not, but that's when the victim's scarf fell off. You mean this scarf? The words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problems. What did the man do then? Well, naturally, he got in the car, was about to flee. That's when I came to my senses. I said to myself, you have to call the police. And so that's when you called the police. Huh, you sure that you saw all that with your own eyes? Yes, I'm 100% certain. That's when she called the police. I thought they, what? I thought they started the perimeter because of the note. Did they not? Sad with the nice. Okay, four and five. Photo with the timer function. Note. At four thirty. First one. Okay. And you're absolutely certain that it was my client who was carrying the body. Well, he was wearing a prisoner's uniform, but as for his face, so you're saying you didn't get a clear look at his face. Well, that's, they were far away, and it was raining. I thought I only supposed to say exactly what I saw. Exactly. You're a remarkable, honest young woman. 
Something about this test money bothers me. But what? Hey, kitten. Have you ever put salt in your coffee? No, jackass. No, why would I? Why not? Hmm. It may actually go better with coffee than sugar, right? Shut up, Armando. Listen, my point is that if you're sure, if you're not sure, you might as well add a ton of salt to it. It might bring out the rust in something, like a piece of evidence. He's right, Nia. Go present something. You got nothing to lose. By the way, I wouldn't put salt in my coffee if the two don't go well after all. I missed something, as I said, they were already going when they received the call. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, they're just my neat details, alright? Huh. Might as well press it. Are you saying that the victim didn't fall down on the bridge? Huh? Um, actually, maybe she did fall. Of course she didn't fall down on the bridge. If she had fell in down, this photo wouldn't make any sense. If that was the case, her coat would have all would have been muddied. If you don't mind, I was asking the witness. No need to be so rude. Well, young lady. Of course she didn't fall down. The man in the prison uniform grabbed her before she could. Huh. <laughs> We're one step too slow. And then, what did the defendant do after that? Okay. Hmm. He's trying to be supportive, don't be mean to him. He deserves- Listen, he deserves a quick kick in the nuts sometimes, you know what I mean? Quick flicking the balls. Hmm. Stabbed with the knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5. There was no blood on the bridge because they said her coat was thick. Bridge located? Nah. Hmm. It's not how relationships work. Maybe not your relationships, okay? No one truly knows how relationships work. Everybody got their own crazy thing going on. Can just leave the body on top of the bridge. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. Then he carried over to the car. After he stabbed her in the back, quietly picked her up. Hey, good dot. Give me that advice one more time. Be pissed off if your girlfriend kicked you in the balls when you try to cheer her up. Listen. Listen, some people have different pain tolerances, okay? Some people are into that kinky shit. Something about this testimony is bothering me, but what? All right, better put salt in your coffee. Huh. Not sure you might as well add a ton of salt to it. Bring out the rust and something, like a piece of evidence. Hmm. But what would it be, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Could it be... Could it be the camera? As a timer function. Hmm. Gotta say, I am a little bit confused here. I'll get it though. Carried her over to the car, killed her broke into the trunk and stole... Uh, Bring to the stolen car, hit the body in there. Couldn't just leave it on the bridge. I'm only sp what I saw. 
It's worth a shot. Yeah, okay. Just thinking outside of the box. He says pressing her and something will click. But I pressed everything already. I was trying to... Hmm. Fine, I'll, I'll go over it again. Why not? Fuck it. I'll skim through it. With my eyeballs. Alright. Saying the victim didn't fall down. And this is when she said he picked him up. And then she, later on she talked about the scarf falling. Uh, no, you need to be rude. Grabbed her before she could. Huh. One step too slow, so that's definitely not it. I don't think that's it. I know she's saying something that doesn't make sense, but I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Because of course she's saying something that doesn't make sense at some point. What did the man do then? Well, got in the car, he was about to flee. That's when I came to my senses. Said to myself, you gotta call the police. Yes, 100% certain. Could just leave the body on top of the bridge. Hey, wait a minute. Can I look at something real quick? Why did they confuse me? They confused me earlier with that shit. This is also... Remember earlier when I looked at this and I said... And she said where her position was and I was like, that makes no sense. This is what I was talking about. It's still... She still wouldn't be able to see that. But then they started attacking me because I used that piece of evidence. Hmm. Wait, it wouldn't be that one though, because that's a that's a fact, it seems. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Yeah. Fuck! Then I guess it is the one with the car then. Fuck. Alright, let's go to the statement with the car then. Still wouldn't be able to see the damn thing. Yeah, as you said that the graph is probably wrong. Yeah, he said it was wrong to, um... Like, in terms of, like, the bridge being out, but... Still, earlier when she said, yeah, he ran about, like, ten feet, or whatever. Meanwhile, she wouldn't even be able to see ten feet, because even... You know... She wouldn't be able to see that. At all. Didn't know if the bridge was wrecked then. Also, at the same time, if the car was on the other side, the game makes you feel dumb sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, if he's like, even if, even if, right, the bridge was out on that side, the diagram that they still showed us is the one with the car on this side. And if she was where she says she's at, she wouldn't be able to see the car at all. Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your own very eyes? With your own very eyes. Yep, I mixed those words up. Yes, and? Yes, and? Just like a fucking comedy act. It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at this picture. Take a look at this photograph. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car, this outcropping of rocks is directly in the way. That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you cannot have possibly seen the killer's car. Why do you lie to me, lady? I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. Is that right? It's not high at all. It was... A, I was able to see this car just fine. Oh, yeah? 
I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? Is this the location that the photo was taken from? Well, is, why did I say in a question? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Click clack. Your own photo tells the whole story. I still think the photo is like placed wrong, right? If it would be from that side. Assuming, assuming that they were facing, assuming that the bridge was out and that they were facing, you know, that side or whatever, she would be on the other side of the broken bridge. Right? That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Just assuming, you know? You can clearly see the left side of the bridge. But the outcropping that is being referred to... <clears throat> but the outcropping that is being referred to is more likely a cliff. Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. But still, you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. Order. Order in my court. What's the meaning of all this, Ballyhoo? Ballyhoo. Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Oh. Hmm. Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. It ain't easy being cheesy. <laughs> to, uh, is human to forgive divine... Wait, what? What the fuck? I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to, to err human. What the fuck? Are you a robot? <laughs> okay. I don't know what the hell just happened. I think I had a stroke. <laughs> I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? That's not fair. Save the tears for later, kitten. Mr. Armando. Don't look back until the trial is over. Now it's time to go forward. But... But that wasn't fair! Ah, kitten. You need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hit the body in there. So tell me, how'd she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Huh? Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're gonna have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness. Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk because, because there were marks left on the trunk's lid. I'm certain there were scratch marks when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. It's true. It certain looks it certainly look like marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken onto. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any sense here. God. People are crazy. <laughs> Stay off the gas, Judge. What are you doing? Definitely had a stroke as it made sense. Did it? The Ur of Human? <laughs> what? It didn't say error. It didn't say anything like that. It said err. The uh of human. <laughs> Alright. What she just said, is there a contradiction in there somewhere? <laughs> He's doing Maya's job. Oh, to err is human. I just read it. Eh, I just read it wrong. Alright, what she just said. Is there a contradiction in there? 
I mean, again, I'm just saying, again, if she, if she knew all this shit, then she wouldn't be on this side of the car. I mean, this side of the car, this side of the fucking layout. She would be on the other side of the bridge. Alright. Uh hey, it doesn't matter. I can afford to make a mistake. Doesn't work. Melissa Foster. It looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in the field taking photos of wildflowers. But even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when? When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally. Finally got her. <laughs> I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Perhaps it would be faster if you stayed off my dick for two seconds, alright? Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She put the corpse in there herself. She's the owner of the car! I wouldn't say she put the corpse in there herself. She's kind of dainty. I don't think she can carry a body, you know what I mean? Huh. She happens to be passing by. She's the owner of the car. I would assume that they would run a... You know, they would run a check on who owned the stolen car, but... I guess. Because the stolen car actually belongs to her. That's why she knew about the scratches. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Frankly, Your Honor, after hearing a pathetic response like that, I have to question whether or not such a pathetic lawyer should even exist. Did you hear that, Miss Fay? I believe Mr. Edgeworth just called you a chucklehead. Yeesh. Isn't that overdoing things a little bit? Yeah. Alright. Definitely wasn't the owner car. I guess she happened to be passing by then. I can't see her putting the body in the car. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Frank, ah, oh God, are you serious? Are you absolutely serious with that? She's so small and tiny. How would she do that? Did she trick the prisoner? What did she do? That Mia and Diego are a power couple? Of course they are. They would have had beautiful children. Let's see. <laughs> She's small. She's so tiny that how? How? Like to drag a body is one thing, but in order for her to pick up one, she must have she must have cohorced the fucking prisoner or something. There's only one way the witness had a chance to see those scratches. Yes, what is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in there herself. The prisoner would really hide the body- oh, The prisoner? Why did I say that? Why did I say that? The person who really hid the body in the trunk of the car was... Melissa Foster. It was you who did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never. It was the man in the prison garb. He's the one that. I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Flawless had been in if Mr. Flawless had been the one to put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would still have been in the ignition. Oh, I see. Thank you for letting us. Thank you for, thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Clearly, want to say if she did kill Valerie, her count would be the three. Exactly. Of course, it would be the three. She's a fucking little murderer. God, why? Why is it always the cute ones? <laughs> Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. And attempted one, yeah, Phoenix. 
That wouldn't have been Miss. <clears throat> that could have been Mr. Flawless that put the body in the trunk. Huh, preposterous. They even suggest that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could have the corpse could have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And when all <clears throat> God, I need to drink my fucking my tea here. My vocal cords are going away from me. We already know that at the time she was she was taking photographs. Now's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. Hm. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is that the shutter for the wait, what? What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Mia Foster herself. It has a timer. Just look at her; she can fit in my pocket exactly. Damn right, it's always the cute ones. It is always the cute ones. Why are they evil? Why, why do they gotta be evil? Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Why? It's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. What are you trying to do? That's when the crime occurred. That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field, as she claimed. Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes. She was somewhere else. Exactly. She was not in the field. Hmm. Will the defense please explain further? Listen. This is a crucial point. It's a crucial point for you to get off my back. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer the question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident occurred? Why, she was over here. Naturally, the witness was standing right here. Hmm? Well, what do you think, Edgeworth? Eh. Before pointing out where the witness was standing, Miss Fay, should we do should we do something her wait what? Sure. Mm. Miss Faye should do something herself. She's figured out where she stands if you catch my drift. Oh, no, don't worry. The drift was certainly caught. Yes. Failure is an, ex is an excellent opportunity for growth. So what, you're telling me she's sitting in the car just waiting? I mean, she would have to be over here to get the butt. Ah, oh, maybe over here on this cliff side or something. Hmm. And we still need a motive. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Why the fuck does she need to kill a police chief? Police. I said police chief. She's not a police chief. What is she? Was she in the car? Could she be standing on this cliff side? It's an even bigger brain answer. Oh god, really? So it's not the car- she's not just chilling in the car listening to the music? Maybe she's over here, right? But they still have to go grab the camera? Or maybe she's standing on top of here, Mufasa style? God. Sergeant. That's what she is. Okay. Hmm. Wish I can look at the court record right now just to get a- just get a feel for that picture. I mean, I've been saying if she wasn't here, if they're saying that they're using the timer and she did leave it here, right? Oh wait, what am I doing? She's here, she's the victim. Hadoi doi. I said that earlier. I said that earlier! <laughs> Why did I forget it? Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's... But that's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order. Order. I fucking- I theory craft the shit out of this, didn't I? I said, wait a minute, hold up. What if they killed her earlier? <laughs> See, that one- that one makes sense to me, right? To go that route with it. 
the last case when Phoenix just randomly went like, what if there was a double? It's like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fell, uh, fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could have only been before the defendant met the victim. How, how asinine. Of course Mr. Flaw Mr. Flawless met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have pulled the, uh, put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Flawless. Yeah, Judge is right. <laughs> That's where Miss Hawthorne was standing. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Judge. Fucking astute uh, observation right there. You still don't understand, do you, Edgeworth? By the time the witness photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Miss Flawless met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Flawless himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. Actually, he didn't. After all, she was the woman who test whose testimony helped get him convicted. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this whole case open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Flawless has forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like. Mr. Flawless had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. Namely, this muddy scarf. It was Miss Flaw Miss? It was Mr. Flawless who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's all that already been proven by the note that the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? She fainted. Huh. How about that? Uh... Where's Miss Foster? She collected herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hit the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why'd she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? No the fuck it's not- what? For what reason? She's the real culprit. The real culprit? The hell are you talking about? Huh. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to, comp to compose herself before we start again. Imagine how mad you would have been. <laughs> Imagine how mad you have to be to faint. I remember I went on a school trip and like we went to an aquarium and we saw like some fishes like spitting out eggs or whatever. And like one of the girls there just straight up fainted. And I was like, really? That got to you? <laughs> the court, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. Motive. For what motive? 
Hmm. I don't get it. Still trying to piece it together in my mind myself. What was she gained by killing the sergeant? Was, like, the prisoner her boyfriend or something? What's going on here? But then why was she pinning on him? For what reason? Mr. Flawless? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're really good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she's committed to- that she committed the crime... Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we gotta get past. Obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill the policewoman anyways? Motive, huh. Anyways, we're still badly in need of information. Information? Right. We need the mo- What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And, and now, at this very moment, as we speak, she's meeting Phoenix. <laughs> and one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. Yeah, but... <laughs> the kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on the death row for. I ain't do nothing. I ain't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Flawless, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. Oh my god, the spirit went away in his eyes. That day five years ago, I dreamed of it. Every day. Hmm. This picture, it, remi it reminds me everything. It reminds me everything. Do you mean it reminds me of everything? Bridge looks same. Wait, why is he, why is he speaking like a caveman? Bridge looks same, just like then, <laughs> five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So, it's been broken like that for the last five years. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend. Dahlia Hawthorne. I forgot her last name was Hawthorne. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. It's all coming together now. Your girlfriend? By the way, how crazy do I gotta be to hit that nail right on the head? I was like, unless it was her boyfriend or something, but that's kind of weird. What the hell? <laughs> what is this? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. Sister? Oh, God. What? You serious? The girl. Let her go. Shut up. Come any closer. And I'll kill her. I'll do it. Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first, I thought shooting someone for kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie betray me. Betray me bad. Me a cape man. Me angry. <laughs> what the fuck, Gain? Gain? <laughs> I think you mean Gain. <laughs> Five years ago, she was 14. Hey. Hey. Listen, it's as weird as it seems. But also, also, if we're gonna go for the targeted audience, because it took forever for these games to get localized over here. In Japan, 
14 is 14 is what they do Joe Bay <laughs> 14 in Japan 14 is what they do that's what I'm saying you can look it up yourself <laughs> what do you mean she betrayed you everything all lies I'll make believe kidnapping too I'll make believe kidnapping Dahlia my girlfriend my love my teen angel my angel my muse did he actually say my teen angel huh you've seen one too many soap operas I do anything she says anything Dahlia says anything Dahlia says hold on wait a minute what are you saying is <laughs> you're saying that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by yeah me and Dahlia and Valerie too Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family is rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel? Eh, that's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent her to dad. Ask for two million dollars, Diamond. Tell me make exchange on Dusty Bridge. We tell Valerie make transfer, cause we knew detective. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a caveman, why? Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, right? In the end, you were planning on spinning, splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. Woman make me mad. Me ape man. Me territorial. That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot me at, f she shoot at me for real. Me and Dahlia. Bang! I was shot in the arm. Dahlia, she jumped in the river. Damn, pretty strong for someone with a frail body. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyways, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when the that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. <laughs> the reading, I'm dead. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. Me caveman. Is this girl the fucking juggernaut? <laughs> Is she the fucking juggernaut? She planned a kidnapping at 14? Bro, this- She's on some crazy shit. That man, Terry- uh, The man, Terry Flawless, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the- Into the roaring river. 40 feet below. So what, is she just killing her for the money or something? What's going on here? These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So, that's why you called her... So, that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forgot what she looked like. So I tell her to wear scarf. I don't want to hurt her, just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth, that's all. <laughs> so, that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. <laughs> She's evil and current. She is, oh god. She's so evil and I cannot love her more than I already do? Fuck. <laughs> just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me. Mr. F Mr. Flawless. Where is it? Huh? Where's what? The money. Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? Not really. I don't know. It gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day, on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. She fucking Mission impossible her way out of that shit. She pulled a fucking Nathan Drake. What the hell? Now gone, with Dahlia gone forever. Into Eagle River.
Ace disappeared with Dahlia. Wait a minute. You can come you can come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Flawless, just one more question. What you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river, gone, Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyways? Good, don't, don't go there. Just 14. The <laughs> 14? I guess we're robbing cradles before diamonds. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, uh, she plays a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil. Oh man, oh man. Angels these days, huh? Wallace takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an eagle or is she really a... Uh... Did I say eagle? My bad. I'm, I'm just losing it right now. An angel. My bad. It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeves now. And use, <laughs> and use me for master plan. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, girl, I want you to poison me. Listen, I'll die happily for her cause. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You gotta strike while the iron's hot. That's one of my rules, remember it? I love caveman brain. God, some crazy shit going on here. If you want to, like... Seeing how evil Dahlia is, if you want, like, to see another how evil someone is, uh, if you've read any of the DC comics that are, that was happening recently, there's a character called the Robin King. It's pretty fucking evil. <laughs> now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Flawless. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, your honor. I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young girl. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanted to make client wanted to make her client off the hook. However, to try and pin the crime on an innocent student is. What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. I see why Phoenix was simping. Exactly. Still don't know her grand plan. I fucking love her already. Me too. It's like, what? Like, alright, let's say they did the plan to get rich, she hops in it, and she loses the fucking diamond, and now she's back. Is it just like a simple revenge thing? Is it a fuck you guys? I almost died for this shit? If that's the case, then why go after the guy who's already on death row? Or was it just like, I need... Or was it just be like, fuck it, he's already on death row, I just need to get my sis out the picture, cause fuck that bitch. Right? Azula from Avatar, oh god. In terms of like, in terms of like, facade, I guess. But, Azula definitely just goes crazy whenever she feels like it. <laughs> What's Alright, what possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Or murdering her sister? Certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. <laughs> oh yeah. Her motive, huh? I figured that. I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of motive? Ah uh, yeah, of course. I think. Huh. <laughs> You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando. Listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so. But I... Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. God, that's... Ugh. Imagine him saying that to his wife. Just like, Mr. Judge is ready anytime you are. <laughs> I like... I like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm. I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like the witness is really professional. 
What do you mean? Look at the 100 watt smile. Just when things are dark, darkest for her click, she lights right up. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. I want to I want to meet the person who sat there and drew the design for for Dahlia over and over. Said she must be the most perfect thing that you must protect always. Just like redoing her art design and just like no, it's not perfect enough. Like a madman. I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I've never I never ever been. I never ever been, I never ever been to Eagle Mountain. And I certainly don't have any reason of wanting to hurt a police officer. Pulling a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Azula was crazy because she's taking more. No, even, like, even when Azula wasn't, like, going off the rails, like, just regularly, she'll just do crazy shit. <laughs> Like, she was more eccentric. You know what I mean? Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow, I have to tie her to this case. Hmm. Alright. Time to put some work in here. Oh, wow. I only have two pips left. Holy shit. Did I fuck myself up that badly? Alright. Till I entered college, I never been Eagle Mountain before. Certainly don't have any reason. Hold it a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Hmm. I'm stretching. Alright. We're kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. You knew about the incident? But weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. So you were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. I can't let her get I can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me. She's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow you're just gonna have to get her to show the court her true self. Hmm. Just out of the country. What were you doing? Out of the country, more like locked up in the hospital. So what country were you living in then? We're all living abroad, but after my parents were killed, it was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What did I, what do I do? Should I press further? Yeah, press further. Fucking, I don't care if your parents are dead. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up to say. I even repeat it for you. What country are you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning child is shut up, Edgeworth. What country she was in and how many languages she may have speak are relevant here. We're here to evaluate as whether the witness has any connection to the case. I lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. And that's why I couldn't. That's why I could never. <clears throat> that's why I could never have known Mr. Flawless or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you just said to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. There you go. He's straight up committing perjury. <laughs> Mia's cold as ice. She's like, I don't give a fuck. Your parents are dead. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Tell me more about that, then. You didn't know either person. Are you certain of that? You sure, you sure about that? Yes. I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Oh, well. That can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? First time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes. It really was a coincidence. Coincidence? Yeah. Until I entered college, I never... Naturally, I don't know either of the... I got nothing out of that? Really? Is, do I just throw the diamond in her face? Do I just literally just throw it? 
just go like, that's a lie! Until I entered college, I never even been there. So, what made you decide to enter Eagle Mountain anyways? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look much like a hiker to me. But, <laughs> fucking the palest lady in the room going, the most daintiest, littlest, scrawny, palest woman in the room going, I just love to be outside. Like, she even has an umbrella indoors. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> you, don't, you don't look much like a hiker to me. But you do look like a digger of sorts. Oh, got her where it hurts. But Eagle Mountain is two hour drive from here and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with the stark, dissolute beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. <laughs> Hell nay. Didn't know you were such a goth. Oh, well, that explains a lot. By the way, oh my gosh, she's a pastel goth. Oh. By the way, what's the name of your college? Okay, what school you go to? The prosecution objects to the, any questions that involve the witness's private life. Oh, fuck off. All that matters is that she is, she is a material witness to this crime. The witness does not need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious and intent. Thank you. She's really going too far. Miss Faye, you're treading on thin ice here. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. God. Hmm. Can't talk about a personal life, huh? Mia Spicy and Diego is smooth. <laughs> Thought she was a kawaii girl. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys ever play a... Ever play ever, uh... You ever play... Crash for it's about time, and you get to the episode with Ta episode. You get to the level with Tana, <laughs> the Japan level, and then you walk up to it. She's like, "Oh, kawaii!" And you're just like, "Oh god!" And then when you die like five times in a row, you still hear her just go, "Oh, kawaii!" And you're like, "Shut up! I hate you." All right. Certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Uh -uh. You're referencing that what type of girl are you meme? I don't know. I gotta state again, I'm not really big into meme culture. I just kinda, you know... I'm not really on social media that much. I just usually like, you know, watch it. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Never played Crash 4? Oh god, oh, this game is... It's a great game, but there's a bunch of stupid shit in it. And it, it is pretty difficult, too. That game gets difficult. I don't like the anti-gravity shit in that game. With the policewoman's testimony, uh, well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes. That's precisely why he harbors such a deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. Did I just say, did I read that right? Forgot his own guilt. <laughs> My client had always maintained that he is innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Hmm? How you know that? Not only did he forget about what he did, but he brought the poor policewoman as well. How you know that? What do you mean by that? Your client. You forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well... She's right about that. Miss Flawless did kind of forget. Wait and see. No, press harder. Keep talking. You like the sound of your own voice, don't you? You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if he had been wearing a white why if I had been wearing a white scarf that day? Then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm? That's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Flaw's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do? Hmm. 
added to the testimony. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like to add it to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and, a, and mentally unbalanced for, <laughs> on that. Oh, God. Testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not what I... Enough, witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. Listen, sometimes you gotta dig yourself deep just to get what you need. And just in case I fucked it up, I'm putting it on a separate save file. <laughs> we don't need a repeat of the first game. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Yeah, they did say it in front of her, right? Hmm. There's two things added to the testimony. Naturally, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Huh. Dahlia, you are formidable. Well, guess might as well poke the bear. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone's wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm. That would have been a terrible loss for the world. <laughs> Looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando. Keep looking around and you're going to lose sight of the finish line. Yeah, I know. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Hmm. Damn. certainly did not have any reason to want to kill a police officer. Let's see. Uh, the color of the scarf? At least that's what I know. Let's see. Yeah, they did say the color of the scarf in front of her, and it's in the evidence, too. So. Perhaps. Actually. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we went over it multiple times. But your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only that you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Come on, Edgeworth, let me do my thing. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once, the, uh, once, to, uh, once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that, at that time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm. That seems like rather suspicious. It seems like... Seems like a rather serious mistake. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. It's not fair. That's w the wicked, that wicked inmate. I'd never be able to forget the horrible day. Damn. Did I press the last one? I'm pretty, I think, I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. Kidnap a poor girl, defendant is terrible, such my, yeah, I'm pretty sure I pressed this one. You knew about the, yeah, I did. Yeah, she started talking about she was living last year or whatever. She read a documentary or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yes. Can't let her get away with lies. I think I might just have to, like, just... I might just have to throw it at this. I might just have to be like, But you're Dahlia, aren't you? But I want... I want to see if we can get her to admit it first before we threw it at her. Hmm. Let's see. I'm really trying to think here. Do -do 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 -do. Hmm. Certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. I might just have to throw the diamond at, at her face. 
Hold the grudge and kill the officer who testified against you five years ago. Might have remembered things wrong. Yeah, I might just have to, like, throw it at... I think I just have to just throw the diamond at her. Just, like, fuck it. I don't think there's enough information to, like, just throw the diamond at her like that. But fuck it, I, I guess. I mean... What do I got to lose? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I expected that. Hmm. Think the color was only mentioned to Gumshoe? No, the color was brought up before when, uh, remember when we were talking about, um, her getting pushed down and stuff like that? And they're like, but the scarf. And then we talked about her being in the photo wearing the scarf. So she wouldn't know, she wouldn't know, like, you know, she wouldn't know those pieces of evidence. It's just... Hmm. Naturally, I didn't know either the finish or victim, so I answer. Certainly don't have any reason to want to hurt a police officer. The scarf, but not the color. Try the scarf. Really? Alright. But what? Try the scarf with what? The, just, like, just, just that? Really? Huh. I could have sworn we set the color in front of her. Like, multiple times. Witness, I want- wait, hold up. Uh, it's a blue scarf. What the hell? <laughs> Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in this photo, but look at the scarf that the victim wore as identification. Are you talking about this scarf right here, then? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. Oh, trust me, I will mess this the fuck up. Feel bad because way too convincing when I say color. Said so hard to point you to the right direction. <laughs> it's fine. I got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. A white. This is the scarf you identify as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but... What's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is because she's colorblind. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? Uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. What? What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fowler's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for wear white scarf for identification. White scarf. What? Witness, you knew that. You knew what the note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Uh Well, Miss Foster, Order. Mr. Edgeworth. I'm waiting for your explanation. Knew the answer almost made it made this section an hour long. Now that's fine. I was thinking about the scarf too, but I just like even if you didn't say anything, I already thought that they talked about the scarf. So I still would have I still would have sat there looking stupid. 
I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Flawless is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say, one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, Kitten? Maybe, somewhat, maybe I did figure out, maybe I didn't, who knows. Yep. The third person who knew the contents of this note was... Detective Gumshoe. Valerie's younger sister. Victim of the kidnap murder, fed from the page, nobody found. There's one of these. I mean, we can just grab, grab her up, right? This won't be bad. They won't hurt me with this one. Eh? There you go. Hang on there, kitten. What is it, Mr. Armando? Here, I made some special, made some special cafe con lache for you. I put in plenty of sugar. Drink it before you get cold. Don't be shy. Huh? Why are you doing this? Your brain needs stimulation. You need sugar. Drink some of this, and then think it over again. Listen, keep messing up like that. All right, fucking. Oh no! That's why I saved it. Yeah. I knew they were gonna do some crazy shit like that. I would assume that, uh, that her sister wouldn't be living with her, though. Would she? Imagine, like, jumping off a bridge and just coming back and be like, I'm home, sis. Isn't it crazy how you almost killed us both? She just realized that Dahlia is painting her hair. Wait, what? What the hell are you talking about? She has she has black hair like her sister. <laughs> painting you mean dyeing her hair? <laughs> painting her hair. Well, yeah. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. Yeah, wait, what? Did it say that? Oh, yeah, it did. Hmm. We say with painting? Oh, yeah, okay. I've heard it before, definitely. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. This is her name. There's her name right there. What? So who's this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Don't have a word for dying? Oh, that's okay. Sorry, I'm stretching right now. Miss Faye! Miss Faye must be desperate if she could try to bring the dead back to life. Holy shit. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim was the victim's deceased young sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped. And killed by Terry Fair... Uh, by Terry Flawless or whatever. You say she was killed, but... Was she really? You sure about that? <laughs> what are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago. When she fell off the dusty bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five, uh, 15 years, uh, five years ago. Why did I say 15? Why am I stuttering on this? If she were still alive now, she'd be 19. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Objection! Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. Oh, yeah, I'm saying. I'm gonna say the N-word. <laughs> but I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is, in fact, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? 
Huh, nice work. That was like toasting a grenade into toasting? Tossing a grenade into three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I understand. If I can exp if I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Witness? Just who are you anyways? I, uh... <laughs> Diego. <laughs> Diego just sits there, drinks his coffee. He's like, I'm gonna say the N-word. <laughs> no, Mia, don't say it. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought that the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't? You don't mean... Yes, Your Honor. I, too, am going to say the N-word. <laughs> the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally. We... Can we just point... I'm pretty sure Dahlia, when no one's looking, screams the N-word. As loud as she can. <laughs> Naturally, we, can, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What do you say? <laughs> Looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way. But then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted her all he wanted was her testimony. So he made a little trade. Let me introduce to you the victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But well, as you can see... Why? Why does she hide her identity for five years? That's nothing to do with the current case. Witness protection, bitch. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. <laughs> Reality crumbles like a piece of paper. Accidentally? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of the victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Fay? I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At <laughs> Look at the tears in her eyes. At any cost. How dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm? But, but even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious to her, her big sister. Miss Faye? Must, Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? <laughs> Bruh. I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Listen, if there's stars in the chat, you can blame Twitch because I do not have auto mod on. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with the prosecu with prosecutioner's logic. Miss Fay, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would the witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he turned it around on me. <laughs> I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Huh? That wasn't me. Who's was this guy? This crazy coffee addict. I think we heard enough empty threats from you, old man. <laughs> what makes you think they're empty, boy? Because you're... Because you're... Prestige looks like she. Your prestige. Why did I say that? Your protege. Your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Huh? I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> you think? You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. Nope. You just arrived at the moment of truth. That's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me. Huh? That rashness of youth. How charming. It's coming from someone younger than me. 
<laughs> I clipped edgy will be cancelled. <laughs> I'm going to say the n-word. <laughs> now then, let's not, let's not waste any moment. What motive would the witness have for murdering her own sister? What is this? Is this the thinnest idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punch line. Well, Miss Faye? Oh, that was, uh... The radness, the rashness of youth. The rashness of youth. Wait, what the fuck did I pre- Did I present the diamond? I thought I presented the diamond. Did I not? Hmm. I didn't save before that. I did not save before that. Gonna have to skip some shit ahead of time. Alright. Third person that knew contradicts the note. Damn. Speed this up. <laughs> Objection. It's like a million of them. <laughs> Didn't see that. Well, you just laughed at Edgy saying the N word. Oh man. Cause I can I can totally imagine him doing that. Just to like. Just to prove a point. He's like, ladies and gentlemen of the court, I'm going to say the N-word. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god, I really... Huh, I really should have saved earlier. Shit. Skipped a lot. Look at this. That's a lot. This is why we this is why we save before every question. Alright, I think this is a good spot to save it. Should be a good spot. This is why when you get answers right, they should give you some health back so you don't gotta do this shit. Alright. What are we doing? What motive would the witness have for murdering her own sister? I'm pretty sure I clicked the diamond, but, you know? And he's like, what is this? Fell from bridge, nobody, nobody was found. Could it just be for this? For revenge? Reminds me, Edgy is into West Coast rap. <laughs> I bet. Let's just say, I'm gonna assume that I did pick the diamond, right? I'm gonna assume that I did pick the diamond and didn't stick, so I'm gonna present this. Okay. Well, then we're gonna choose the diamond, then, because fucking... Could have sworn I chose the diamond last time. If that's not it, then what the hell? Diamond. Huh, it wasn't the diamond. Fuck. Oh. Hmm. Alright, well now I have to actually think. Now I have to use monkey brain. Alright, think we heard enough empty threats, blah blah blah. Alright. Motive, when this happened for murdering her own sister. How about this? It says, tell her, it's like, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Okay. Maybe it's that. I think it would be the note because it's written, tell her, yeah, see, that's what I'm, that's what I was thinking of. Yep. The story starts after Terry Farewell escaped. Farewell, I just call him a farewell. Why'd I do that? 
It looks like farewell when I cross my eyes. <laughs> he called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth. There was a dangerous, dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie was to keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Fair Terry Fallis. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of important secrets between the Hawthorne sisters. Very well. I grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you enlighten us one more time, Little Maple Leaf? Little Maple Leaf? Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, huh, Dahlia? But this will be the last time you hide yourself, uh, you hide behind your womanly wails. <clears throat> what is this? <laughs> Farewell? Flawless is evolving. Flawless evolved into fair weather. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Flawless. Oh, God. Give me a moment, guys. I'll be right back. I'm having an interruption at the moment. All right, we are back. We have returned. By the way, that's my new Be Right Back screen. I repurposed an old animation that I had on my person. Anyways, <clears throat> the brands from Price was raw diamond my sister Valerie brought in to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Mr. Okay. She shot Mr. Flawless in the arm. I dropped something. I had to pick it up. <laughs> That's when Mr. Flawless tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. It was nice, thank you. That was also, that animation was also made by Volta Bears. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're, to, and we're to believe after that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. 
As you heard, the witness is still traumatized by the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We still got the info that ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right. It was a fake kidnapping. Terry Flawless told us... <clears throat> told us that the... My throat is like getting clogged up. Told us that, uh, told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says. Anything Dolly says. Be eight, man. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. God, how long is the rest of this trial? We went over stream time like an hour ago, I think, right? Yeah, an hour and 30 ago. <laughs> this is a long one. And I don't want to stop in the middle of a trial. Five years ago, I was kidnapped. The ransom price was raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Farewells in the arm. Yep, Farewells. That's it. That's his name now. <laughs> that was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Farewells had hold was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use the knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. He was to save me. He tried to kill me by shoving me off into the bridge from behind. <laughs> I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Farewells was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I tried to try to run away, but Miss Flawless, I, I just switch between names whenever I can. Miss Flawless turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty grin? Oh. In the next instant, I went for a dip. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shell from behind. That was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. Now I was going to suggest that you should start the next case as there's really a great stopping point in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll try and see. It doesn't seem like... It seems like we're getting to the end of this, so we'll try and wrap it up. Alright, and that's why you hid your identity. Yes. I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes. She's the one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I didn't even want something like that to happen to me again. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the office, get official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider helping, without an insider's help, doing all this paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I can count on. And you... You think I killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. It's the moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. Alright. Hmm. Oh, gotta get some sleep. See you next week. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you had a, hope you had a great time. And definitely, next time, uh, 
Next time, it's definitely going to be more Phoenix Wright. Hopefully, we can beat this game by the end. But yeah, get some sleep, man. Do what you got to do. It's important. Alright, five years ago, I was kidnapped. Tell me more about that. Did you and Mr. Fellwells have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. He came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm. Quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Fellwells. <laughs> Did I hear him right? Did he just say he was clever? <laughs> me caveman. Me very clever. Me teach you calculus? <laughs> the ransom price was a raw diamond. I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of $2 million. $2 million. It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Mmm. <laughs> a $2 million pint of milk. I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demands that her sister, Valerie, make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why do you think he wanted to make an exchange up there on the mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like this, it would be easy to tell if he was being f followed. With only one entrance to the mountains, he was ensured his safety. What a wicked clever man that he was. Yep, that's right. It's all your plan. Anyways, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain, and... After she made the exchange, shot me in the arm. Fuck. Wonder what Flawless teaches? Of course, he was teaching calculus. When he shoved me off the bridge, I survived, but oh god, so... Huh. So I decided to change my name. Oh shit, well this is just raw evidence, isn't it? I thought we had to pick something out. Fuck. Hmm. Alright, what do we got on evidence right here? We got stab the knife, loss of blood, bridge location, that's cool. Scarf, of blood, diamond, worth two million dollars. Picture in the trunk, evidence, picture taken. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. Then why would you be in the location? So I decided to change my identity. I'm thinking of pressing this statement, but let me see the other ones again. After she made the exchange, she shot him. Oh wait, no, we're just trying to prove a connection. Okay, hold up, no. What am I doing? Police officer, victim, key witness, five years ago. Victim of a kidnapped murder fell from bridge nobody found. Client sentenced to death five years ago, escaped from custody two days ago. Hmm. Five years ago, I was kidnapped. After she made the exchange, shot him in the arm. That's when he tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. What is... Damn it. Hmm. I'm assuming none of this here would help. Except for maybe... Except for maybe, uh... The note. I feel like I have to present a person. Police officers and the victim, the key witness in the case against. Hmm. I 
I don't... Thing has to do something with the... with the shove? Let me see. Tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge. Well... Why would he try to kill her out of the knife? unchanged for five years. I... I'm be honest, I... Oh, God. Dear God. Huh. Wait, did she say she wanted to run? No, she didn't say she wanted to run. See, what I was thinking was that uh, this one where it says, I survived, but I was afraid it might happen again. In my mind, I'm like, but why would you be afraid if he was sentenced to death row? But she might just be talking about in general, but I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, I'm assuming she's just talking about in general. Fuck. Uh, I decided to change my identity, start a new life, survive, but I was afraid I might kidnap the family. Tried to kill him by shoving me off the bridge from behind. By shoving me off the bridge from behind. He wasn't behind her? He was... What? Hmm. It's so... Let me, let me read her whole testimony again. Alright, once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, everyone knows kind of just what she is. Okay, so I have to prove that it was a hoax. Five years ago, I was kidnapped. The ransom price was raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. trying to prove that like if she's like her sister Valerie brought it to the bridge so why would she end up escaping with the diamond because that that's part of the listen it's they don't know that but it's part of it's what it says in the fucking evidence so I'm gonna go with what the evidence says lost five years ago that's when he tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge ransom for Dahlia lost five years ago in exchange. Huh. I don't know, this one's really got me. <laughs> now you're confused? Exactly. Uh, fuck, I don't get it. <laughs> Survived, but I was afraid. Might kidnap me again. Tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge. It's either that, because... Uh, or this one. After she made the exchange, she shot him. Be the location? It could be the location. Five years ago I was kidnapped. 
could be the location because like if it was a true kidnapping he has absolutely nowhere to go he would be cornered so I decided to change my identity and start a new life I'm actually god I just don't know She made the exchange, she shot him in the arm. I don't... If she made the exchange, why was it lost? Police officer and victim, key witness case. Hmm. You got it, you was right after all? Fuck. Stock and barrel. Fuck. All right. <clears throat> Witness photo. Victim's note. The vet bridge. Wear a white scarf. I don't... Huh. I don't... I'm... I'm stuck on this. I wish there was a piece of evidence that's just like, knife. <laughs> you know? That's like, why shove you off if he had a knife? And I feel like I can get... Fuck it. Definitely not. I know that pertains to, like, this murder, but, you know, we're staging it again. Fuck! Survive, Fred kidnap again in the family's money. Alright, give, give me a moment. I gotta think about this shit. So... Look at the evidence that have details. Like what? You river. Hmm. Guys. Bridge is unchanged after five years. I mean, this one gets me because it says that bridge, as in, like, you know, it's history behind it. And there's the autopsy report. It has to be the note, right? boy. You die. You beautiful bastard. Once the truth about kidnap comes out, realize how much of a Jezebel she really is. 
Okay. So... Ransom brought to the bridge. After she made an exchange, she shot on my arm. Tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge. Nobody was found. I'm just confused as shit. I really feel like I gotta throw a thing on it. If she's telling the truth, she would be six feet under. Fucking... Damn. Alright. Yeah, I'm stuck on this shit. I'm stuck on that shit. Try to kill by shoving me out the Did I use this? Don't think about kidnapping. Think about what would have happened. Everything went as she tells it. Nah, no, I'm just... Nah, this is just... I... I don't. <laughs> She's got my number. Dahlia is formidable. I'll tell you that. That for damn sure. That's all you can say without answering. Alright, give me give me a moment to like mull it over in my fucking head, because I don't What the hell? Dahlia's on some shit right now. I don't Nope, I'm at a loss here. I have no, I have no clue for, no reference for this whatsoever for me. Bridge located over 40 feet. Uh, doo -doo -doo, decided to change. I'm gonna be so upset if it's actually the map. I said it earlier, you know? I said it earlier. I said it earlier, then I went, no, I can't, no. No, it has to be something with, something a little more. Something more specific. You know? Listen, you want to know? I love Phoenix, right? I love you. But your fucking, your evidence system is garbage as shit. If you want to do evidence right, take a page out of Danganronpa. They give you all the details you need on that. <laughs> Instead of this fucking shit. I love you, Phoenix, right? I do. But sometimes you're full of shit. You say that Mr. <laughs> Mr. Flawless pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true! I felt the push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Flawless. He did it. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that is impossible. Impossible? I asked the court recall the condition of Dusty Bridge, now five years ago. The bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, you know what? That's not even, that's not even what I was thinking of right there. Because when I was looking at that earlier, I was like, oh, it's, it's at an angle. They drew it all fucked up. <laughs> if you would have been sma- uh, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. Most certain death. 
I did look at it earlier. I just, I'm gonna be honest. You know how, uh, all right. I'm about to put this in perspective for how I looked at this diagram. You ever looked at like topography and shit like that? When they do topography and stuff, they always make it like slanted and shit. It's never like directly on top of one another like that. So this one, I thought they like made it at like a fucking angle, like a bunch of freaks. Do you understand how Dolly? Do you understand now, Dolly Hawthorne? <clears throat> like some topography charts are just like fucking drew all fucked up, and I was like, oh, well, that's the ones I'm used to looking at. The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small, cha a small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. You're right. The events occurred just as the witness has testified. Then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Huh? I, uh, uh, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Fowler's panicked. <laughs> hey, listen. You can say the score is 0-1. Say that the score is 0-1, but at the end of the day, before the confusion start, I did look at the I did look at the map and I said, huh. Could it be this? <laughs> After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Fall is panicked. Therefore, you could have un unwitting unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. that's true, she would have fallen to the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, if Mr. Edgeworth's explanation is correct. Now that you mentioned it, I do remember now when I fell off the bridge. My skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order. Order in the court. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Fortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Flawless panicked. <laughs> then it's 0-2 because you scored one to yourself? I did. Listen, I overthink myself. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's possible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about that? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court's record. I have no idea what they're talking about at this moment. I'm gonna be 100% honest, I was not paying attention at all. So what the fuck are we even talking about here? I don't even know what I'm trying to prove right now. I'm just trying to prove that, uh... Dub the genius. I honestly have no idea what I'm trying to prove right now. I don't... But I'm... I guess it's the witness photo? I think that's what I'm gonna do. Right? Your Honor. All the answers are right here in the photo. Oh, there we go. Take a look at the wire supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and threw her over. So young and already so forgetful, Miss Edgeworth, he was shot in the arm, loser. Exactly. And more importantly, Bradley Hawthorne had her gun trained on him 
at point blank range. <laughs> I'm saying it's impossible. Oh no, I know for a fact it's not impossible, but it's impossible. <laughs> so, Mr. Don't you know, in anime, as long as there's a railing, no matter how how much space the bars have between them, it's impossible for you to go through. Unless you get, like, kicked through it or something. So, Mr. Flawless throwing the witness off the bridge. That's clearly impossible. Impossible, improbable, and undisputable. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne. He jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun in handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that? That would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You're probably confident that you could handle the swift current, but ever more so. The witness had a, <clears throat> the witness had much more compelling reason for jumping to the river. Oh, then what is it? What was so important that she jumped right into the river? The witness is still alive. The fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life to jump into the rapids. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up to the mountain with her, the two million dollar diamond. No, it can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. You'd be surprised how safe those things are. You'd be surprised how many people won't go on it. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Flawless to help her fake the kidnapping. Bang. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. When the ransom tuck away, uh, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack, Why is that? It's simply ridiculous! Of course it is, Edgeworth. So ridiculous that it might work. Your Honor, five years ago, the witness is only 14 years old! Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon! <laughs> this is a demon. <laughs> and there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister. Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? Well, she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Far uh, Farewells or whatever fuck, I don't know, I don't care about his name no more. Valerie called her sister, Dahlia. And then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth. And she wrote it in a note. That's right. That was... That is what Valerie sealed... Oh god, that is what sealed Valerie's fate. That's when you had your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. I'm slowly losing brain matter as time goes on. A plan that a plan that would ensure either of you either of your accomplices did the kidnapping wait what? A plan that would ensure either of your complicate accomplices to the kidnapping with talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She has a spark in her eye and a grin on her lip. She's a demon and I can't resist her. <laughs> Who's that? I'm laughing at a time like this. Forgive me. It's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You assume me. <laughs> you amuse me, woman. Miss Mia, 
you can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? I ain't got no ev no such thing known as evidence. <laughs> On a night like this. You guys ever wonder why I stream like only four hours? Fucking my brain slowly goes. It's the sun is currently setting. <laughs> evidence that I plan to kid. Uh, wow. Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14 I plotted with Mr. Flawless and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Well, Miss Faye, I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we come to the end. To be honest, the witness behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. I'll make sure this sticks. <laughs> Fall for all of her tricks. Oh, I gotta admit, I kind of <laughs> did crazy tricks. Nice. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me. Oh, trust me, I made a fool of myself multiple times, Mia. It's okay. Huh. Without evidence, the trial's over. Who decides that? Mr. Armando. Come on now, kitten. How did you figure out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony? On the day in question, Dolly Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mia Faye's stolen... Uh, Mia Faye... What? Why did I say that? The sun is setting currently. Of Mr. Farewell's stolen car! And then... And then went to meet him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne? That's what you think, right? Yeah, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Huh. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who's the one person who can testify to the demon? The demon woman. You're up. Go get him, caveman. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes. We would like to hear the testimony of Terry Farewells. I'm gonna say farewell to him after this shit. The defendant? There's only one person that can shred, shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dolly of role is in the kidnapping. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dolly disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is... Terry Farewells. <laughs> big true. It is a big true. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? Prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance. Mr. Flawless, my last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I got left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Hmm? I don't believe it, no way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Me caveman. Mr. Flawless, I don't know what she I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Flawless. There's only one question I want to I want you to answer. I wanna fucking end this stream. <laughs> Two days ago on Dusty Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? He's gonna say Valerie like a jackass. Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago she promised. She promised never ever betray each other. Terry? Dahlia? Is it true? 
It's true, you're alive. You don't trust me anymore. That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I believed in you. <laughs> At this point, you should call him Falls, and he falls for tricks, like all of us. This is the last cross examination. I'll bring out my big brain. Oh, my big brain has been lumping. At the three hour mark is when big brain goes by. That's what happens. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there's only, but there is one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. You're a bitch. <laughs> Delia. Oh God. Dear God. I will allow Mr. F Mr. Farewells, I don't care. I'll allow him to die. I'll let him testify once more and only once. Well then, Mr. Flawless, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness? I'm sorry, I apologize. Water, please, water. Me need water. Caveman. Can't talk. Need water. Uh, oh well. I guess... I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitter than hell itself. <laughs> Alright. That day, 4pm, I stopped the car. I was in front of the bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put nobody in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was, that was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Oh, you're a jackass. Miss Flawless, you're covering for her? Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was fitting, fitting way to end the trial. Well then, Miss Fay, please proceed with your cross examination. Is this how you want it to end? Another guilty verdict go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You kitten, I think. No, he's dead. She's so evil. No, I mean, dude, I love Dahlia too. She's amazing. God, why does she gotta be evil? Fuck! She's so cool. God damn it. Alright. Mad day, 4 p.m. Stop the car. Let's see. Between 4 and 5? Okay. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put Bunty in car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. She left. That was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Hmm. I'm gonna go on a whim. Huh. Guess not. Let's try that again. I'm going on two, two hunches that I have. I'm going with the scarf colors, but I guess not. <laughs> Worst thing is that she'd still be cool even if she wasn't evil. I know, exactly. That's why she's so fucking awesome. God, I hate her so much, but I hate to love her. I love to hate her. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. <clears throat> I watched my car from the bridge. Never put no body in that car. Had the body in there. You're watching the car. The bridge. Other side, nobody... Other side broken. Nobody came across over there. So, I was watching car. Alright. Suppose that was an obvious thing to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting the feeling contradiction. I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyways. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Anyways, nobody came. <laughs> I would happily be a pawn on her board. <laughs> Listen, anybody would do anything for Dahlia. 
the true the true fucking <coughs> the true way to simp is to do it for Dahlia. Huh. That was Valerie, not my Dahlia. How can you be sure? It was raining at the time. Sunset and day was at five o'clock. It'd be already it would have already been pretty dark on the mountain at four thirty. Please, Mr. Please, man. It's your last chance. You're already taking the fall once for something you didn't do. That woman. It wasn't Dahlia. Well, that was easy. Stop right there. What <laughs> more needs to be said? Hmm. Even if it means the death penalty? Everything. Even if it means taking a blame for a murderer? You still do whatever is necessary to protect her? Won't you? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her. Even if he can show his lying, the poor guy will start to be cursed. Will start to be cursed? Will still be cursed. Whatever, man. I don't care. Big brain's gone. It's left two hours ago. I can't read. I can't think. It's over. <laughs> I'll still have to point out the contradictions anyways. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess. Love to hate her, hate to love her, love to love her, and hate to hate her. <laughs> Any good writing? I don't know what it is. Exactly. Alright, let's see. It was a friend of the bridge. Was there, so I waited on the bridge. You were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yep. I like waiting. I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Superboy waited five years to find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink of an eye. So, it's definitely this one, right? Hmm. Watch from my car bridge. I'd never put nobody in a car. Taken by the witness. I'm doing this again. Watch from the car. Bridge. Other side. Nobody came from there. So I was watching car. What else are you expecting? Hmm. Something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction, maybe? Huh. I wonder what on the other side of the broken bridge. Let's see. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up the mountains. That's it. Anyways, nobody came. No car, nothing. Alright, I got this. Hold up. I got this. Hmm. Came, she stood in front of me. She wasn't there. I waited on bridge. <laughs> she bring out the tips because brain's taking breaks. <laughs> Now I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Big brain, listen, I have to summon all my powers. Big brain comes back briefly. When you think about it, you know? What did... Mm. Taking my witness bridge unchanged for five years. Can I look at the... Uh Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, big brain moment came back. 
here's what I'm thinking. So earlier, remember I talked about the, uh, the angle that this was taken from, and I said if it's not... If she's lying about her position, that means she'd be on the other side of the bridge. Well, if she wasn't lying about her position, then looking at the photo, it seems like she's at the back end where the bridge would be out, and he came walking up to her. So she must have been there before him. So, when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So, you wait on the bridge. You sure about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You sure, huh? You sure about that? <laughs> well then, I'm sure too. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh. Oh. Oh. I would love to I would love to hear your 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 rationale on this, Miss Bay. Are you sure are you sure that you're sure? <laughs> oh there, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Once this is over once this fucking case is over not case, uh court session is over. We're done. But <laughs> thank you for the follow. Fuck. Oh man, I just how long have I been going for? Five five hours. We are clear over like the streaming schedule but that's whatever man i can't stop in the middle of a fucking trial gonna ask can you push for a bit more because really recommend starting the next case it's fine um i would push for a bit longer on the stream if it was me but there's people around me who like are getting up and starting their day and shit i just hit my microphone getting up starting their day and shit and they're very 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 loud and they like to yell a lot, so I don't want that in the background, <laughs> right? All right, let's see. Oh, I'd love to hear your rationale on this. Yeah, sadly, it's gonna have to be a no. Sadly, we won't do the next one until uh, next stream, which will be, you know, same time. It's in the schedule. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Uh-huh. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. F Mr. Falls, since you want me to say that now, <laughs> you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Gotcha, caveman. Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. You just want the truth. I got there around 4 o'clock. It's true. Be caveman, it's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to the special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah. It's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought... She brought a memento to present our love. Uh, she was 14! <laughs> a memento? Five years ago, I hid it under a base of tree there. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I wanted to get. You went to get poison? This little bottle on the necklace is your memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said? He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock. But he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. With that much time. <laughs> you sure it doesn't even pick up on the mic? Oh no. Trust me, they haven't gotten started yet. Do you really want to hear the sound of screaming children? I don't think you do. Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of the car. Cross me. Indeed, certainly was enough time for it. I still have a chance. Mr. Falls? There's no mistaking it. Huh? Mr. Falls? Dude! You did not! That's enough. Please. 
Witness. I promise her, five years ago. If it ever happens that we can trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. No. Stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I was stupid. Couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No. We're so close. Just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No. Don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls! Mr. Armando. Thanks for the coffee. And so my first trial ended, suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. I say Dahlia came out a fucking winner. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul, I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with the secret smile on her demonic sweet face. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando, you were so close to the truth, it was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make you're gonna make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia? Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando. Mr. Armando! No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, there's always fate. It always fades over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately... I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. God. <laughs> well, fuck me, Saiway. That's another. <laughs> that's another for the kill count. Oh damn. Seize the moment. Push on to the task. Holy shit, a brand new episode has been added. Episode 5, Bridge to the Turnabout. Dude, I said it at the beginning of this game. At some point, we have to meet their, mo their mother, Misty Faye. 
We need to meet her. If she's not in this fucking trial, I'm going to be upset. Highly. <laughs> They've been talking about her for fucking, for three games now. Counting this game, three games. But, this is definitely, definitely where we're going to end off. I'm not even, I'm not even going to press it. I'm not even going to go into it. I don't want to see the office. I don't want to see Maya. I don't want to see Pearl. I don't want to see nobody, no nothing. This is where we're stopping at. <laughs> Can you go for like half an hour? No, <laughs> I can't. I really can't. But don't worry. Because when you think about it, we finished, what, three and we just did four? We did two. We did two of them. So, you know, we're already going. We already went over by like an hour and a half. So, so this is where I have to end off the stream. But don't worry. Next stream in the schedule tonight, we'll come back. We'll do as much as we can. I can definitely see us finishing this in like, in like the next two nights depending on how long it goes. But, that's it for now. Now, as a reminder, just want to say, we do have the new emotes there, right? If you want to sub, sub, ringing ears, blurred vision, the end approaches. <laughs> nice. If you want to sub, go ahead and sub, but if you want access to the emotes, you can also use the channel points that you accumulate just by watching the stream. They, they should be free for the channel points. And if you want to use the Chad Wellington emote, good old Sir Chad over here, the animated one, you have to go and get BTTV, get that extension for your desktop on your browser. You use that, the emote's free, and you can, you know, you can just throw it in chat like that. It's all beautiful and stuff. So, that's that, just as a reminder there. Now, as always, I'd like to thank everybody who came live. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Fucking, uh, for those watching the VODs, thank you too. My, I know my, scre my streaming schedule sucks, so people aren't able to catch it live, but they still watch the VODs, and that helps out too, so thank you very much. And for those on YouTube, try and catch it live. Or if you want to watch it before it comes on YouTube, catch the VODs when they're there. Because you don't get to see it until the whole playthrough is done. But the sun is setting in my brain. We managed to have Big Brain come out at the last second and help us. <laughs> and I am now going to fade away into darkness until the next stream. And by that I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna end up fucking probably spinning all day on Final Fantasy fourteen like a jackass. But there's that. I don't have any announcements for anything, I don't think. So just keep an eye on the YouTube for like for me archiving shit. I still have to do that, but that's it really. So, as always, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm hungry as fuck. I think I'm going to eat. What am I going to eat? Hmm. I think I'm going to head to. I'm. You know what? I'm going to head to the bodega. I'm going to grab me some like some plantains or some shit. Something. Something good. Anyways, uh, tonight it was. If I remember correctly, it was Serena's birthday. So, happy birthday to you, Serena. Thank you for stopping by on your birthday. And I hope you like the psychology books that you're picking up. I hope I'm remembering that correctly and I'm not being a jackass. You know what? I should check that. <laughs> should double check that. But, thank you once again for watching. I'm a chef, chef too.